What's up guys, welcome to another video. It's been seven days since everything happened, but this is not as miserable a video as the last few we've been doing because we're pushing forward and we've actually had an amazing opportunity come our way thanks to a very special friend. So I'm hoping this episode is gonna be a little bit of positivity in what has been a very negative two weeks. So look, obviously we're still in the thick of it. Um, we still don't have a new home. We're, we're exploring options. We think it's probably gonna be a temporary fix for a while. As you guys know me, I'm already trying to think of bigger and better things to do in the future, but it's gonna take some time to get there. The support we've got online, again, I just say it in every video, it's getting us through, getting us to be positive again. We're getting around the table. The team are getting their cameras, their laptops back. We're trying to make some videos. We're trying to be more positive. I'm kind of just sick of being miserable because it's been a very intense, constant, miserable time. So in the midst of all that misery, I got a phone call from a very, very good friend of mine who all you will know. And he basically offered me an opportunity to drive his car at Japfest, which is an Irish Drift Championship brand one coming up next week. I obviously said no, I was miserable. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't even want to leave the house. I was getting a bit down on myself, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. Do you know what? I think if there's ever something that we could do to maybe just even for a short while, take our head out of the sort of bad things that have happened, it's to go somewhere that we love, which is Mandela Park, Japfest, surrounded by JDM cars surrounded by the amazing car community in Ireland which we love and we've been a part of for so long and celebrate cars because at the moment I kind of was hating cars and hating drifting and getting very frustrated and I want to get back to loving it again and if it wasn't for this very special man I would not be even considering driving in the first round because I have no pro car but as I mentioned in the last video Josh's pro car is still intact even though it's probably the most unreliable terrible car we have it has somehow survived and Josh is going to drive on the pro class on Sunday in Irish Drift Championship and I am also also going to be driving something that I've never driven before but I've been a huge admirer of not only the car but also the driver I could go way more on building this up but I almost can't believe it and the opportunity I've got so I'm gonna pan over and you're gonna see what I'm gonna be driving and you're gonna go this is real life because the last two weeks have definitely not felt like real life why not stop there so I want to introduce you to the car that I will be driving none other than James Dean's Eurofighter what's up so Cheers, Dave. We usually do lots of uh, fancy cuts and stuff in these videos, but I'm kind of not in the humor for a lot of that these days. But yeah. look, James offered me to drive the Eurofighter, and I said no, because come on, it's like your baby, your pride and joy, your car. I don't know, I was kind of feeling down about drifting in general, because you know what it's like, you build these cars and they take so much time, and my Corvette, love that car. And then we had a conversation, which was only so random, that when we were talking about the Corvette actually gone, which is still very upsetting to me, yeah. The last thing it did was battle you. That was the last thing the Corvette did. Jesus, I didn't so, even think about that. So that was the last, and I said, you know what? If the last thing it did was battle James Dean in Mondello in front of a packed grandstand, that's not a bad way to finish its career. Like from the story of where I got it to where it finished, it was like, it would be tough to beat that moment for me because I never ever stood in the top 16 in Mondello Park. I never got to be that side of it. And I, that was probably the best day of drifting I ever did. So yeah. even though the car is gone and I'm trying to stay around that and not think about it, it had a great send off on that last day. And then you called me and you were yeah. like, you come and drive the Euro Fighter. And you know when people say like, look, don't get me wrong, I've had so many amazing offers. I've been offered so many things, but I'm not a charity guy. And I really kind of feel like I want to work back myself to where I want to be. But then you kept persisting. Well, yeah, why not, man? Like Mandela Park, I'm going to be there with the RX-7. This is ready to go. And I'm like, Dave, let's just have some fun. You know, get your mind off things and just yeah. enjoy it. I can like, help out and we'll run the car for you. You can just jump in, drive, have fun and see where you end up. I think you're going to love this thing. <laughs> I, I, I will. I'm going to be a little frightened because it's, it's obviously a lot more car than I've ever driven before. But the reason I actually said yes is not just because I want to drive, is that the boys actually came around because you messaged Josh as well. Yeah. And they came to me and said, look, this has been literally 24 hours a day between like insurances and assessors, company stuff and vet debt and financials. And it's all very heavy and it's taken me away from cars and I don't even have any cars really now. So I don't have anything to distract myself. Usually I'd have a rough day. We'd go buy a few parts or work on a car, but we're not quite there yet. So they said, look, the only way you're going to escape from this is go drifting because yeah. when you're drifting you have to concentrate so much on drifting that everything else goes out the window as soon as you put the helmet on you're just like in your own little world again you can just you know enjoy it and you know yeah, and I live look, in the moment and and then also the lads did say that they can't watch me be miserable anymore on videos they just have to see something good come out of it so look james and i have been friends for 
Jeez, now it must be 12, 13 years. First time I met you was, I'm pretty sure, the first time I remember meeting you was 2010. Yeah, 2010 City West. City West. Yeah. yeah, so I didn't know much about drifting. Was like, that Pro Drift? It was Pro Drift, yeah. Pro Drift back so then. So Pro Drift back then, James, now it's no secret, James has won a few bits and bobs now along the way, but back then I knew nothing about drifting and I got your sheet of information and it was like, Castellan Roach, he's 16 years of age and he's already the champion of Ireland or something and I was going, there must be a typo on this. And then Even went, that year I was actually competing in a few rounds of FD. That right? was the same year yeah. you were in the Falcon S15? Yeah, it was. So I went and then obviously you won that event as far as I remember. Yeah, myself and my brother Mike in the final. Yeah, I was yeah. like, who are these Dean lads? And <laughs> anyway, long story short, over the last 10 or 11, 12 years, me and you have been in, Jesus, how many countries? We've done Drift Week together. We've, All over the world. Like we were at the Guinness Book of World Records thing you did in, in Dubai. We've been in every country in Europe and everywhere along the way. So we've obviously become good friends along the way. James being very good at walking the walk and me being very good at talking the talk. That's always kind of the, yeah. way, the way it works. So, Obviously, I've competed against you once, I think, maybe in all that time, and I've done bits and bobs. We've driven together we loads driven, of yeah. times, though, at the bashes. Yeah, and had loads of fun. And, and then I remember when you came out with this car, I was like, this thing is beautiful. We, I went to Goodwood, we were there when you were driving up the hill. And <laughs> There's a lot of history of the two of us, and then there's also a lot of history, maybe even I've been following this car around for quite a while with Driftmasters, Goodwood, and everything yeah. else. So it just felt, special car. If, yeah, it felt yeah. like, you know, I rarely like borrowing cars or borrowing anyone's stuff. I always kind of like having my own stuff, but I'm so far away from getting a pro car at the moment. I just felt like I don't want to go not drifting for the whole year. And even if I did one weekend, if I was to pick any car, it'd be this. If I was to pick any place, it'd be Mandelo. Yeah. And if I was to pick any event, it'd be Jap Fest because that's just such a buzz with all the JDM cars. Cause I always love when the paddock's full there and it's all cool stuff. So we were gonna do a live action arena. Yeah. That went well. <laughs> because we have nothing now to do that with. Oh. However, uh, Neil Sheehan from Juicebox is gonna be revealing his 86 there, which I'm really pumped on as well. I'm really trying to get him positive because he was very negative over our stuff. And I was like, no, no, no. I think you've put more into that 86 than we have into every single car in our place. So he deserves his day in the sun. You want to take the RX-7 out for a rip, which is pretty much the coolest car I've ever seen in Mandelo and the, definitely the loudest. Yeah, that could be a problem. But yeah, yeah. That car is not a live stream car. That is an in-person, you have to sit there and listen to that thing go. And then Josh's car is, like, I mean, Jesus, of all the cars, Josh had so much hardship with that thing and it finally works. So he's going to be there. And then I'm going to drive the Eurofighter, which sounds like a weird sentence for me to say, but this is probably the first time I've felt excited since everything's happened. I'm trying to forget all that. And like, I think if I concentrate on it, I have, to I have to borrow a helmet, borrow a suit, borrow boots, borrow all that. But if I could borrow a car, that'd be unreal. And I'm just, I don't even care about winning or losing or any of that stuff. That doesn't bother me. Just even the experience of driving it would be yeah. amazing. And for me personally, I can't wait to see you drive it. Like, I I think you're gonna sit into it and you're gonna be like, oh my God, this thing is sick. Have you ever like, watched it drift from the outside? Twice, Becky did some donuts in it and uh, Top Gear did oh, the video yeah, on it. I remember yeah, so that was the only other time. And he broke it. He broke it. <laughs> right, that's a bad sign. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> so, okay. No, that's you're like, used to sequential, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, you're gonna love it. Oh, this is like, this is a dream come true. So for people who have never watched, let's say this car drift before, I know some of you guys, it's strange. We have a lot of people that have come in that will know who you are and then some people who don't because they might've just been following the story since everything happened. But just give us a quick rundown again on the car and the specs and everything with it. Just even yeah. for my own sake to feel a little bit excited about it. So BMW E92 M3, 2JZ, dry sum. Yeah. Engine's fully built by my brother here, Dean Sport. Yeah. Here, I, so I can't even remember, it's been a while since. The thing is, James Dean doesn't break down too much so you never get to see too much of the engine bay yeah it's a super reliable car uh so it's still three liter four corner turbo high compression over 10 and a half to one compression ratio big 280 degree cam cnc ported head yeah like absolutely everything done to the engine it's dry sumped as well so it makes with the nitrous over a thousand horsepower but i don't think uh you'll need the nitrous with because IDC is 265 tire road, so you won't need uh, the nitrous. So what's it without the nitrous? It's 900. 900 revs to... Um, Why would you need another 100? Anyway, that's... The 9,000 RPM too. 9,000 on a 2J. It sounds sick. I've never driven a BMW in competition. I've never driven a 2J in competition, but 
I've watched you drive this enough. Now, this is the unfair example because James is actually, and he won't admit it, but far more talented than anybody who's ever got behind the wheel. So it's not going to be as easy for me to just jump in and do what James does because the cars don't drive themselves. I've seen this before. I've driven other cars and they're very difficult to drive. But I'm excited to learn and do a couple of laps and just have some fun in it. Again, no pressure. I'm I'm really going just for the escape and yeah. kind of the mental health side of it. Just there to, will be pressure when I'm screaming down the radio at you telling you. I have to go yeah, hard. It's going to be spotting for me, which I, I feel, I don't think like this is fair. I'm get, going in at the heavy end here now, but... I know exactly what the car can do so I'm just going to be pushing you all weekend <laughs> maybe, this will, be, maybe this will be more you stressful. won't be able to think about anything else bro now you can't lose oh stop <laughs> I don't care I'm just going to go do my best and have some fun and I hope everybody comes and support look I think if anything from this whole experience has shown me how strong the car community is how we're all friends and we all have this weird bond of like stupidity behind it where we go yeah if we have a load of people around us that are also a bit stupid we don't feel as stupid and that's what these events are about is a bunch of people coming together looking at stuff that is way overpriced way like unreliable but so much fun and the fact that it's 20 years of our Irish drifting celebrated this year at Japfest. For me, we've both been quite like involved, if not more involved than most people in that. For that, it's nice to have a little collaboration between Drift Games and JD One Thirty and the whole lot together. Yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm extremely excited. Like we have to sit you in the car too. I want to sit in. I want to see. I want to see if did, I can you, fit. Did you ever sit in? I've never. Before. I've never sat in this car. So before. the seat is still adjustable because we had the guys from Top Gear um, drive it, and he was actually shorter than you. You're, you're trying to get into a James so, Dean car, you're always like... If you pull... Try to slide this FR. Oh. That's like a street car. That is, that is literally... How does that feel? Spot on. Is it? <laughs> That's like... Everything's so ergonomically nice in here as well. Oh, it's, it's, and I'm even quite high because I don't like... I would have thought of getting into your car, you'd be on the floor. Yeah. And you'd be kind of trying to peek I over. I actually, in early years, I liked sitting as low as possible. Well, I had no choice and like some yeah. RX-7 and some S chassis, but the BMW and... It's quite roomy inside. The Mustang as well in America. There's so much room in them. You can actually sit up higher from the and, floor. And to me, when you drive a Corvette, you see nothing. You're yeah. in a post box. So any car I get into other than the Corvette, I go, there's so much visibility. Yeah. Because in the Corvette, you're always very very down low and the, t the window is very slanted so you're only looking at a little bit so this actually feels quite nice yeah i feel how firm the handbrake is compared to most um jeez and it locks with almost that's no the full pressure. throw oh yeah it's so, so just a slight direct. throw yeah i like got most of my cars you're back here yeah, before yeah, it's starting yeah. lock that's mental but it, i'd say best handbrake you ever use the brakes are really good it's on the new rs90 samsung is sequential so it's this i this i have this i have some familiarity with which is pretty yeah. good I, I i had a samsung albeit on the other side did you have one in the 180 i did yeah, yeah i had one in the well, same one that's in josh's car now we, we did a lot of hand-me-down we had one samsung and it ended up going through all the cars <laughs> that in the end because they're quite expensive but like even the carbon dash the flock top this i presume this is for glare yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. a lot of people have carbon dashes in their cars but then they really on a sunny day all yeah. you see is little dots across the yeah. window and you feel almost dazzled we, I did the same with mine and we ended up having to match the, the dash because like when it was all shiny it was like it looks class and then you're just looking at the dash on, yeah, the, on the window yeah so that they, like it, it feels quite nice I like there's nothing really to adjust you that much feel the pedals and all like clutch and yeah throttle and it's all feels at home Already. Unfortunately, James, it actually feels more comfortable than the cars I owned myself. <laughs> so uh, that's either a good sign or it's a bad sign of the way I built my own cars, that yeah, they weren't as comfortable. And you have a pretty good view of like, the front. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. A, not that bad at all. It's a cool car. It's just longer than what you'd be used to, probably. So like, when you're running the wall, which you will be, uh, you know, the no. you just you just don't go up against the wall yeah, yeah, as yeah. close as you would. I think be the Corvette the, the Corvette was very um, strange because left to drive. As yeah, well. but also your pivot point was so much. You always felt like you were kind of spinning because you're right back on the wheels. Yeah. Whereas this is you're quite more in the middle. So this is to me the Corvette always its downside was where you sat. Because yeah. you're so far back, and I sat in Dean Carney's Viper as well, and yeah. you're so far back that you feel you're doing more angle than you are. So I'll ease in, like I'm not going to go bananas, and but as I said, it does seem. Look, I've got the best uh, drift car builders in the world, proven drift car builders and driver helping me out for a weekend. So there's not much I really have to worry I'm about. I'm looking forward to it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm bringing the RX-7 up just to do some demo runs, if there's any downtime, if they'll allow me to do it. Well, Mandela always have a problem with James's RX-7. <laughs> so basically they, they say that there's a spike sometimes in, in the noise decibel meters when James is around in that car. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And like that car is ready to go as well. Yeah, pretty much. Um, doing some tuning. So it'll be, it'll sound maybe a little bit different, better I hope. So that's the plan for next week. Like we're just gonna, Shoot a faster rev limiter, just a few things that we didn't have time to do for LZ Fest last year. So I'm excited to drive it again, it's been a while.
Let's go check it out. Actually, something really weird that I wanted to mention in this video that, so we were outside our place and it was obviously burning down. I went to go get my phone to ring my mom because getting very worried. So I went to ring her and my Facebook was open and I just looked at my Facebook and I just see your car in Long Beach on fire. So this was Tuesday, same day, and your car was on fire. And I just literally, for a moment, I don't know, my brain was like drifting, explo like everything yeah, in drifting is gone. What's Every, on? Everything's, what's happening drifting. <coughs> yeah. And I like from that side, then obviously I followed the story. So I just wanted to say as a quick side note for James that the only positive that I had that week was you winning Long Beach. Yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. went home on Saturday night. I was so kind of depressed and annoyed and whatever I said I'll turn on Formula Drift and like 10 years ago when I started that's where I, I used to watch Formula Drift just in the evenings loved staying up it was quiet you're on your own watching FD and then watching you go through all of that this that week to get to the final was like that has to be the hardest win you've ever had like and I've seen yeah, well, I've seen them a lot of them but that was looked like it, the toughest it felt like the most emotional win I've ever had to be honest because I was right before that fire happened and it's very hard to believe I got a message with a picture of the engine block and fire and I'm like oh god I hope that doesn't spread the drift games and I was like what the hell is going on and I messaged Mikey and Michael that are here in the workshop and I was like what what the hell is going on with fires lately the next lap I go out I swear to god five minutes later after talking to the guys about what's going on with fires lately my car goes up on fire and I went proper up on fire yeah like yeah. worryingly and yeah. you sent me a picture it looked like the car was done yeah it was uh it was looking really bad the team were thinking that where we could be done here because it melted absolutely everything even though here this is a bit of my intake manifold like Jeez. it literally melted oh my god yeah and the reason it got so hot was it was a normal fire where we don't really know exactly where it started but what happened is it ruptured the nitrous line and then there was a full new bottle of nitrous in oh, just, just fit it and it just dumped the entire nitrous bottle on top of the fire. Now nitrous isn't flammable but it will keep a fire going. Well, it's it, it concentrated just, oxygen it, essentially. Exactly, so it feeds it. Yeah. So um, that just made it go out of control really fast. Yeah, there was so much damage done. The team worked like two days solid, 24 hours a day, building a full new loom, new engine, new intake obviously, new absolutely everything all the plumbing new um, new windshield new panels everything new totally rebuilt it went back to the track and had to like tune it on, on my laps that i was drifting because it was a different yeah. spec engine and oh my god it was insane and then we had gremlins because obviously all it was all all really put back together quickly so like my first battle in top 32 was against Frederico and I got to the finish line. So at the start line, it was at 110 degrees water. The fans weren't working. It was randomly happening in, in practice that the fans would stop working. Even the override switch wouldn't work. And then I talked to the team and I was like, what am I going to do? And they said, just send it. They said, it's not a, it's not a 2J, it's going to be okay. And uh, that's literally what they told me over the radio. <laughs> and I got to the finish line. I had warning lights on my dash for the whole lap. And it was 147 degrees Celsius when I got past the finish line. Nearly like, 150 degrees water I'd never seen any engine that hot in my life. I was like, this has to be finished now. Like, And then the fans just started working. Started pulling <laughs> temperature back down. I'm like, no way. If they were telling me call a five minute rule because it was blowing all the coolant out. I was like, what will I do to the team? They said, oh, just go back. It's fine. So I went back to the start start line, uh, ran the second half of the battle, it's dead cool. And because just coming over the finish line, it switched off. So all the lights off in the dashboard, uh, car cut out, but I was just past the finish line. Then my top 16 battle, the car totally turned off on my lead run with Hurst. Uh, while he was chasing me, it was just starting to rain. He spun the first corner. So luckily we both had a good lead, a good chase. They re-ran it and then we went one more time again. But like there was so much dramatic things happening. Then it started raining, like Yeah, I was crazy. about to mention that, just a complete washout. Crazy crazy conditions and the most slippery track I've ever driven in the wet but I actually felt kind of comfortable it's got all the Europeans do all right yeah, yeah, yeah. Mandela Park well <laughs> yeah. me over the years and uh, feeling kind of okay at that point then we ended up winning it and literally when they called my name out I felt like a kid like winning my first event because I had a fire that week but when I watched your video I was like my fire doesn't even matter like you know what I mean I, think I, I was like I, I don't know how to feel about this I was upset like really upset watching your video very upset but then and again because we've been friends for so long that we kind of know the struggles it takes to you know people tune in and see shiny cars they see a lot of this like oh they're just living the dream and it's just all going great and then obviously we're selling that because it is great what we do but there's a whole lot of work that goes <laughs> a lot on of stress a lot of stress behind it to make it because obviously you guys are watching a lot of these videos especially you know if you're watching a Formula Drift event James is representing his sponsors he's 
representing his team his emotions have to be kind of put to the side to go and do a job because it's his job that's his yeah. full time job a lot of people are drifting for fun and for hobby you're drifting as a job it's yeah. your job so you have that level of pressure above everyone else where this is your livelihood this is what you do as a living whereas we can go be good or shit it doesn't really matter it's only we're only disappointing ourselves to have a whole thing around that and then I looked at what that happened because I'm on home on Saturday night going everything's gone everything's burnt I have nothing I'm bankrupt everything's terrible blah 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 and we'd made that video but I didn't even really remember making that video and then I watched you come through every single struggle to win the event and it was very inspirational what I was like thinking if you could do it after that like yours was in a much shorter compact period than me but under like same thing as like you could have given up on Tuesday the team could have given up on Tuesday you could have said we'll be back for the next round they went through the night through the day and it reminded me of my team yeah. who do the same and you don't achieve greatness by doing ordinary things that you can't that's be extraordinary by being ordinary and that's what i think separates like my team your or your team like we might be the figurehead of that but there's a whole bunch of people oh below that that are gosh. putting in so much maybe thankless hours yeah. that it inspired me that like your team was rallying, my team was rallying, you yeah. got the win. And I was like, nah, we're going to go Just never back. give up attitude. No. Yeah, and no then what. you gave me the message and I was like, it's all just kind of fitting in place. So it was just a nice little story that I wanted to share in the video because without that, like no offense, like I was very inconsolable. You were a bright light in that week of just the Irish doing things. It was yeah. pissing rain in California. I was like, it's, yeah, one, it's, it's one of those weeks like where the Irish weather but, is yeah. there. What's going on with the Irish people? Every Everyone was asking, what's going on with you guys? Well, like, I, I thought it was ironic that like in a week where you went on fire and our place went on fire, you ended up in the pissing rain. Within, in within California. minutes. Yeah, in, but in California. Like, yeah. it doesn't get rain four days a year, five yeah, days a year. Yeah, yeah. I, I just thought it was wild. So I just wanted to throw that story in before we move on. So this is the, I don't know, this is the car that everyone wants. I don't know yeah. if everyone wants it to deal with all the time because they're a very, very specific type of car, but they have to be the holy grail car of anyone who's in drifting is a four rotor RX-7. Like it has to be the one car that everyone goes, I'm not sure I could commit to building it because they're not the easiest to drive. They're not the, the you know, they're not the most perfect drift car, yeah. but they're just the wildest and sound the best. And this thing, when I first heard it, when you started up on idle, I was like, oh, it's just, everything I wanted it to be. It just doesn't get old. Like even if you started it here now, you'd be like, Oh my God, does it actually sound that wild? Every time I started, it puts a smile on my face, no matter what. It's and you nuts. said, didn't you say it was uh, that you used to, when you were a kid, on one of the four rovers oh. in Gran Turismo, yeah. actually just listen to the car on idle at the game? So I used to have, um, yeah, Gran Turismo 3, and if you went to the in-car video, so like there was a, like a bumper camera, and you could press zero on the PlayStation button, and it would just go to this idle, and you turn the TV off to the last, and it would just have the four rotor, and I was like, oh my god, imagine one day having something like that. Here she is. And that is a long lifetime dream. Oh, which, yeah. which again, the like, first time, the first time, the first event you ever went to, which was City West that time. Yeah. I was driving this car, it was purple, yep. had an SR20 in it, and since then it went through probably five different changes with different SRs, yep. different upgrades, and the ultimate dream was to go rotary one time. We managed to uh, make it happen last but year. But this is like the final form. Yeah. This is sure. like the perfect, like, if a lot of people who don't know, this is, uh, for say you're not a big car fan, I always say like if someone is, knows nothing, if yeah. I had to explain this to my mother, I would say there's a car called the RX-7 FD, right? And this is a two, this is a car that basically has a rotary engine, which is not even getting into that, but basically <laughs> yeah. it's a turbo rotary engine. Now if you took that engine in that car and then you took another engine from that car and then you just bolted them both together, that's what you're getting. Yeah. Which is, if you break it down, yeah, the most ridiculous. Like if yeah. you took a V8 and plopped the V8 on the end of it, it sounded ridiculous. But in this, it is essentially two engines put together. Mm -hmm. And to make custom crankshafts and- A like, one crank between the, the, yeah. the four rows. Yeah. It's NA, so uh, no turbos, so that's what makes it even louder because you have your intake here, exhaust manifold underneath, and it goes just straight back. There's one silencer on it, would you believe? And it's still insanely loud. I put a second one on it just for when we're testing it around here and stuff. It's still very loud. So these engines are very specific. Like they're not something anyone can build. You had this one built by experts that basically do this for a living. Yeah, PPRE in New Zealand. You know, we build all our own engines here, but when we're going down the rotary route, it's like, okay, there's so much work to do. Like so many custom parts and they were very supportive 
aggressive and quick and had a lot of parts to hand to do it all themselves. Are these the same and guys that build rotaries for Mad Mike? Yeah. Yeah, so he's had a four rotor. This would have been... 2008. Yeah, that four. car made his name because yeah. every single car head in the world knew that car yeah. because of the noise, the flames, the, the videos he did. And this is almost like when I was not around you in your shot but I always said was like you took Mad Mike from our younger years like Mad Mike's car and then you put James Dean's drift career on it this is what this car is yeah because yeah. it's your Falcon famous livery car you won championships in this car yeah so it's not a car that was built just for this project yeah that's history it is history, and then you put yeah. in my opinion the coolest engine ever in it, and it yeah like I don't plan on ever competing in this again maybe some fun events like LZ World Tour or something like that but it's just for fun putting on a show and to have sitting in the workshop and how does it drive compared to what you thought it would because you've never have you driven four rotors before no nope, never drove a four rotor how does it drive it has a little bit more power than the SR but it has way less torque so like you just have to drive it absolutely flat out keep it on high RPM lots of clutch kicks yeah. lots, of, lots of revs but like it's just so much fun and the thing it's is like, it feels underpowered because they sounds, make very little torque because there yeah. isn't much displacement to make torque but also like what torque figures does the car make oh it's low I'd have to check the dyno sheet to be sure but it's it's very low like you would be it's, surprised it's, it's almost 600 horsepower but the torque is in the fours I would say so like when you think about and this is just the reason why you might think why do not many people have these engines is because the cost <laughs> the cost is absolutely astronomical yeah for 400 torque. Oh yeah. We know a guy that put any rotary engine in an MX-5 and he spent, I'm not gonna say who it is so he won't give out to me, but he spent about 40,000 euro, 50,000 euro putting an NA built street ported in an MX-5 and he made less than the standard power yeah. of the car in terms of torque. But it sounded unbelievable. So this is almost like realistically big old motorbike engine kind of style. It's yeah, like, not a lot it's like torque, a two stroke. Like a two stroke, uh, yeah, yeah. but much bigger and much more complicated and we can't wait to see this shred at Jaff Fest. And like, this is the only car that, so when it's debuted a car and I've gone cool and then other people that release this car, after a while you kind of get used to it. Yeah. Kind of becomes normal. Every time this thing starts up in the pits, everyone goes, Where's that? What? Like, in the what's name going on? Is that? So, it, it's, super cool car. It's, it's special, and uh, I can't wait to drive it again. Like the last time I drove it, I think, was for your video. Mm -hmm. One of the last times, yeah. No. Lucas is still going about how much he got views he got on Reels. He's, he was happy with that one. That was a good one, Lucas, right? That was, that was probably the best one for my age. <laughs> in my account. Lucas lo loved the fact that more people what viewed. Did we 4 million views or something? 3.3. .3. Yeah. So, not that he's counting. 3.3. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> how many likes? <laughs> but the best thing about a Lucas is that he made a very fancy video and it got less views than him, someone Hanging filming him, the filming the car. Hey, I risked my life for that video. <laughs> You're bringing this one out. I'm going to be driving the Eurofighter. Josh is going to be in the MX-5. So he's also in a Mazda, which is even more mad, with an SR. So kind of like a very old school version of that in a way. So it's all very cool. And I just want to say thank you, James. Oh, it's been it's uh, my absolute pleasure. Like, that's what friends are for, right? They go through tough times and then someone like him comes along. And I really tried not to be in this position, but I said, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. I'm, I'm more excited to see you drive that than I am driving this. Like, I, I really am. Like, I want to have just have a good weekend with you and and just enjoy the crack with all the Drift Games crew. And and that's the yeah. thing I was only saying on the way down to Lucas when we were driving down here, because one of the reasons I wanted to come down and do this video was one, to thank James, obviously, publicly, but two, just to get away for oh, a while, yeah. just in the car, yeah. just go for a spin. Have a chat. Like, have a chat with We've Lucas. been chatting for an hour or so Yeah, already, we're going like, old yeah. stories and yeah. stuff. It gets your mind out of the present. But what, what's great about it is that um, Lucas and I were always saying that like we're such a big fan of yours because there's no other motorsport in the world where, and I'm always gonna call you the world champion because you've won all the stuff there is to win, and you won't say that, but I'm saying that like, where would a world champion in motorsport just give their car to somebody who's going through a bad time? Like, that's drifting. Yeah, it is. Nothing makes sense. It it's is. not like Lewis Hamilton's gonna go, do you know what now, I have a friend of mine, he's not doing so well, just put him in the F1 car there for the weekend and see how he gets on. You're pushing me into that, and I appreciate it because to be honest, I was kind of dreading Jaff Fest because I said if I was just standing around, I had no cars there, I wasn't driving, and I was gonna just be kind of a bit miserable because I'd just be like, I don't really know why I'm here. I'm not doing anything. So now I have a purpose. Now I can get excited about it. And I hope everyone at home is going to be excited about it because we got, what, 600 JDM cars. Neil's releasing his 86. I'm driving the Eurofighter. 
where you're driving the MXI, there's a stacked IDC grid. It's 20 years of Irish drifting, and this is the first time I've done a proper. And pro the weather could be good. And the weather, it's not in September. Because it's raining in California, it must surely be <laughs> sunny yeah. in Mandela Park. So tickets are available on mandelopark.ie, guys. And also, a big thank you to everyone who's still picking up the merch on the Drift Game Shop. It is definitely keeping the lights on and keeping us through this tough time, and we really, really appreciate it. This is the first time I've done a promo since everything happened, and I'm starting to get back into the buzz of it. So I gotta get back. I gotta get going. Oh, you'll, I have we'll, no doubt. We've got more updates after. We got Jack Fest, and then we got Spain for Drift Masters with Ryu and Connor and the new Drift Games team. And then we go to the World Tour in Montreal. Right? That's enough to distract me for the next like three, four weeks. And then hopefully in those three or four weeks, I'll be able to come up with a better plan of what to do next because usually I'm Mr. Plans ahead, but this one's kind of knocked us back a little. But thank you so much to everybody. Thank you to all of our sponsors. And most importantly, thank you to the man, James Dean, no who stress from has side. always been there for us from the start of the channel right until today. He's been right beside us and we'll always be right beside him. So thank you guys for watching. Thankfully, this is a little bit more of a positive update and hopefully we'll see you guys on the next one where we get some more hopefully good news i know you got problems know you at the bottom know you took a loss today everybody want bottles living for a throttle you just want bottle today tell me joy where it's hiding i've been trying to find it before i go all the way because everybody got problems everybody's starving but don't you go off the